Hi guys, welcome back to my crazy freaking vlog of me complaining about everything. Um, I just wanted to update you guys on a lot of stuff because I've been gone for a month and as you can see, I'm smiling, I have makeup on, I look good, I look happy, I look healthy. Am I all of that? Probably not, but that's okay. <laughs> um, as you can tell by the title, I quit being a flight attendant and I want to get into a little bit of details about why I quit as a flight attendant. I'm sure all of you guys are curious, so we're going to just jump right into it. Um, as you guys might know some of the story, there's a lot of details, so if I don't speak of them, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not very put together on vlogging yet, but I'm trying. I'm trying really hard. But a lot of you know my crash pad number one was just horrible, very toxic environment. Um, the landlord was not very professional. She became really, she just became different as the month went on that I stayed there. And with all the bugs and everything in the bed, I just was like, this is not worth it. This is a rip off, so on and so forth. And then I went to a second crash pad. Um, $475 a month and I have nothing bad to say about this woman in specific in specific um, she was very nice she was a very kind lady had a beautiful home but there were things that I didn't like she had cameras inside of her house and it wasn't a crash pad like it was only gonna be me and her staying there unless if she got another roommate but she wanted the roommate to be there for at least three months or longer and um, that wasn't going to be me because I wanted a transfer, but every, as every month came, I never got my transfer. And so I went to it and I was just like, the agreements aren't for me. And I stayed there for one night and I was like, I'm sorry, but it's just not working out. So I left and I stayed in my car for a little bit longer. Um, I got a trip and then I came back and I stayed in my car. Um, and I just, it's not a safe environment. It's, not physically and emotionally healthy nor physically it, it literally teams every little triangle or every corner of the triangle of that aspect but yeah I was supposed to sit ready reserve the 4th of, Ju 4th of July and they took me off of ready reserve on the 4th of July because somebody dropped their trip and I had it picked up um, or they got put on my reserve schedule. So I was like, oh, not a big deal. It is what it is. But at that time, before that four, I noticed that four day got on my schedule, I had contacted the head of all flight attendants. And then I also contacted my base manager in regards to how I can go about putting in a resignation because one, they don't, they don't cover any of this in training. And so I asked how I could go about putting in my resignation or who whom I can talk to to do so. And also I asked for help. I asked if they could help me out with a living situation. If even if they could put me in a hotel for a couple of days, like I researched crash pads like crazy on every Facebook page that you could think of. I've asked flight attendants that I've worked with. I've asked random flight attendants in the crew room if they know of anything, I've looked everywhere and anywhere that you can think of. And I could not find anything. And so they didn't contact me back. So I was like, well, I can't quit in the middle of a trip. So I'll have to work this four day trip. And my plan was, was to quit and go back to Montana to be with my family um, for the 4th of July. But that's not how things worked out. I really wanted this job so bad that I would stick anything out. Did I want to quit? 110% not. Um, was I kind of forced to? Yes. Uh, it just was not a good situation and I have higher standards for myself. So um, that's the reason why I quit. But anyways, I got this four day trip and I worked this four day trip. Um, at the beginning it went all great and everything and as the four days passed, it just got worse and worse and worse. Like this was the trip from hell that's all I can say it was not fun it was not good the crew was horrible like the first officer was dry the pilot was ignorant she was mean she was not a good person and she still is not a good person um it's actually funny because it's like every time that I go on the Facebook page I see people offering 100 or 150 bucks to pick up trips with this girl as a pilot and I'm like hmm that makes a lot of sense but 
anyways uh, I got really sick during this trip and I didn't know how to call out so I just kind of toughed it out I didn't look good I looked sick this entire trip but it just plummeted like I didn't think it was that bad the first day I was like oh it's just a headache and then I lost my hearing in both ears like I'm going down the little aisle and I'm like oh can I get you something to drink like can I get you a beverage and a person's like yeah I want a coke and I'm like a sprite and they're like coke and I'm like peanuts <laughs> no and I'm like oh my god I yeah it was it was not fun um but yeah so I lost my hearing I literally could not hear there's so much pressure built up in my ears and that's the worst thing to go through when you're flying but anyways um I got really sick and then on the fourth day I woke up late for my wake up call my alarms did not go off I set like four or five different alarms my alarms did not go off I was late I woke up from the hotel calling me my crew was mad at me like I don't think I've ever thrown on pantyhose so fast in my life like so freaking fast I threw on my uniform didn't do no makeup which is like huge for me like if you know you know but I didn't do no makeup I was just like it is what it is so then the pilot in the middle of our trip, we were in LA and she just tore me apart. And I'm not gonna go too into detail with this. I can tell you guys on another story. Um, but regardless, she tore me apart. I cried all day. It was horrible. So like when we got back to Salt Lake City, I literally don't think I've ever ran off a plane as fast as I did before. Like I literally ran off because I didn't want to see the pilot. I didn't want to talk to her. I didn't want nothing from her. I didn't want any source of contact. I was like, you're ignorant and I'm done with you. Like I'm very respectful of my elders, which she didn't think I was not, but um, I'm very respectful. But when you cross the line and you disrespect me, I feel some type of way about that and I'm not standing for it. So anyways, uh, this trip was horrible. And so the next following day that uh, I was off was Thursday because I work a four day trip. So I had one day off and then I started another four days of reserve. And so I woke up that morning and I was like, I'm going to go do my laundry. So I went and did my laundry and found out that my laundry detergent exploded all over my, uh, my trunk. So then that's the place where I slept. So now I didn't have a place to sleep. So like that was just enough to rub the edges, like really roughly secondly I went to the doctor's office because I was like I need to figure out what's wrong with me and as I went to the doctor's office um there's like a little dip in concrete like some places and I think it's like for water or something but um this place had it like completely not mapped out very well and it had like a little ledge of concrete and it hit my bumper and it it ruined my bumper and I'm also not happy about that still but it ruined my bumper and so that was just enough to rub the edges and then I waited two and a half hours at the doctor while the head flight attendant called me and she's like uh do you want to call me back and I'm like yeah I'm, I, I'm gonna have to call you back I'm sorry so I called her back uh after I left the doctor's office I asked him like I'm like hey where am I at in line because people came and went like after I came in like for a while and I'm like why are they going before me I've been sitting here for two and a half hours and I'm like just take me off the list because I'm not doing it no more like I couldn't sit at that place no more I needed to talk to the woman who I've been waiting to talk to for five six days and so I sat in my car I cried my eyes out and I called her and so we had this little conversation um went over all of these these things she's like hey have you tried contacting other people have you tried facebook groups have you tried this have you tried that i was like i've tried everything and i was like you know i don't want this i was like you know two weeks is not feasible for me i'm living out of my car in 100 degree weather which is like between 130 and 175 degrees in my car and my ac went out on me and i, I literally was sweating like i have a photo of me sweating my off sleeping in my car. It was not fun. Uh, I think I'm stuck in the middle of never caring or caring too much, too many. Sleeping in my car. It was not fun. 
Um, and I was like, it's just not feasible. Like, I don't want this to burn bridges with me, but I also don't want this to burn bridges with the company that I was with. I also don't want this to burn bridges with companies that I may want to go forward with in the future. And she's like, no, no. She's like, you've had a very toxic start with this company. And she's like, this is a special case. She's like, we'll reconsider you for hire. And we understand that, you know, two weeks isn't gonna work, this and that. And then we had the conversation and so anyways she's like i'm gonna leave it up to you whether you want to resign or if you want to keep going forward with the company she was like just let me know so i was like hey can i like you know have a couple hours just to clear my mind and i was like i'll contact you within a couple of hours and i'll let you know what my decision is she's like yeah of course and she's very very nice and sweet about it like she was so caring about it um but then after i hung up with her i typed in my gps i was like heading home i was heading home to montana that's where i wanted to go that's where i wanted to be i was waiting five days too late to be there so i went home i drove five and a half hours to montana but right after i got off the phone with the woman that was head flight attendant of everybody or that is um my second crash pad lady called me she's like hi I want to know why the head flight attendant and the base manager is trying to get a hold of me saying that you need help. She's like, when I tried to help you. And so then she sat there and she tried to give me a pep talk. And she's like, I don't know what the deal is. She's like, you started off on a wrong fit. But she's like, none of us can help you. You have to do it for yourself. So like then I just got mad. I just got very mad. I was like, I understand that like you're worried about me. But at the same time, this is my situation, and in my situation, your agreements did not, did not do well with me, and I don't agree with them, and it's I don't think it's the best fit. And also, you know, I just wanted to be like, you're not management. Why are you so worried about my case? Like, this is my business. Leave my business to me and stop getting involved in it, because I didn't contact you. I contacted the head flight attendant of all flight attendants in every single base and the base manager. If they go to you, that's great. But I already told them that I went to two people, one of them being you, and it didn't work out for me. So like, get out of my business. That's just how I feel. But I don't mean that. And like, that means this sounds very itchy is how I'm going to put it of me to say, but like, I don't mean it like that. You know what I mean? Like, I, the woman was really great and I'm grateful that she cared that much about me, but I just was done at this point. Um, so then she's like, you need to make a decision by tomorrow and the crash pad lady. And so I let the head flight attendant know that I was done. Um, I was about two and a half hours from home and I told her I resigned and she's like, we're sorry to hear that. Like we wish the best for you. And then the base manager, out of all times that I tried to contact him, which was like four different times, he never got a hold of me. But then the next following day, he's like, we're sorry to hear about your resignation. He's like, you have to send your stuff in within three working days that following Friday. And I drove all the way home to Arizona um, two days after I got to Montana. And I got a tracking number for all of my uniform items within three days. And they charge me $625, which is a ripoff. So um, I don't have very high things to say about the company, but then also after all of this, the next following day, which is that Friday that I got the email from the base manager, my second crash pad lady was like, hey, like, did you make a decision? I'm like, stop, like quit talking to me. Like if I wanted to be in your crash pad, I would have been there and I'm not. So like, can we not? Um, it was a very emotional and tough decision for me, just knowing I worked so hard to get to that position just to give it up like that. Um, I was not happy. I'm still not happy about it, but also I'm happy that I'm not with that company anymore because I don't have very good things to say about them. Um, I just don't agree with them. I know a lot of new hires are going through the same, same exact thing that I did. And I want you guys to know that you're not alone. Um, know that there's better things out there for you to do and that you can make something work. But, you know, for how much money you make at this company that I was with, it just, it, you can't do it. It's hard to make a living. It really is. And I already have bigger and better offers. 
um, for me and I'm already going forward with the company that I is my dream company um, so I'm hoping to I'm really hoping to be with them soon um, but I was gonna save that information for you guys for August so stay tuned for that but um, yeah I just think that there's bigger and better out there for you and don't limit yourself but also don't feel bad for a company that makes you feel like your mental and emotional health is not there and pretty much like you lose your sanity like if they're not there to help you they're not worth your time and effort because you have a personal life outside of work and if they don't honor that then it's not worth it and I didn't feel like it was that way with the company that I was with um and there's a lot more details but I can only give you like so much in specifics but now I'm back home in Arizona um and I am currently going to go actually do paperwork at a new job I got this job three days after I quit um so it was really quick but I just wanted to let you guys know why I quit being a flight attendant and what the deal was and where I've been at but don't worry because more is in store I'm not quite done yet with my journey I'm still in the process of um going forward with my dream company so stay tuned for that if you guys have any questions or want to know more information about anything or interviewing process whatever the case may be please comment and let me know i i love seeing so many people empower me and be there for me and you know just be so positive like i love seeing that in the comments towards me towards other people um we're all here for each other so yeah i hope you guys have a good rest of your day and i will be talking to you guys soon bye